Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of 7-Minute Scaling Secrets, where we interview entrepreneurs and, and learn a secret on how they scaled up their businesses. Today we have a special guest, Jim Ng, who runs a digital marketing agency, which typically brings, up, uh, brings more customers, sales and leads than uh, his, his clients can actually handle. And today we're going to find out a little more about how he does that for his customers. Uh, Jim, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, so I started the business basically like from my bedroom. Uh, this was back in you know the end of 2019. Uh, I was like cold calling uh, to get clients. Uh, and then at a point in time, I was really just trying to sell uh, SEO. Uh, okay. Just trying to, you know, basically just pay my mortgages. Uh, just trying to like make it like a lifestyle business basically. And uh, it was a tough time. Uh, but basically what happened was we are in a position today whereby for our own business, we have too many leads, uh, you know, that we can possibly handle. Yeah. So, uh, I think we're in a position of trying to scale up the business, obviously with, uh, you know, your help, uh, really just trying to, uh, systemize, uh, and pack everything, uh, in such a way that it's really productized whereby it's kind of like in that really nice little factory uh, kind of you know framework whereby we can apply it to any business that we work with uh, primarily we work with like service-based businesses uh, that relies on lead generation uh, so you've got your things like your aesthetic clinics uh, you've got your you know funeral service providers uh, you got your you know b2b businesses that sells like uh, you know factory stuff uh, electronic components so we work with every single like obscure niche right that I would think like you probably haven't even heard of yeah, that's that's the level of degree that we we thrive in because, um, like I feel that the degree of complexity right really challenges uh my team uh to really become a better marketer. Yeah, so for us we are a very ROI driven agency, meaning that uh we want our clients to to really see that you know uh that that uh top line revenue growth, uh because uh, at the end of the day like you know our main clients right they are SMEs. And they rely very heavily uh, on marketing to really be able to, you know, parlay that cash flow into the business. And right. they, can't, they can't look at marketing as an expense, right? They look right. at marketing as an investment, whereby, right. you know, for every $1 that they put in, they must generate at least $2, $3, or $5 yeah, dollars back out. Course. Otherwise, uh, you know, they would, they would get, uh, you know, uh, their business will be run into the ground. Okay. So that's what we do. Oh, well, that's awesome. Uh, and, and that's a problem that uh, I mean, a lot of people want to have to have uh, the problem yeah. of you know too many incoming leads, too much <laughs> customers, and then trying to figure out like you know how to actually handle that. Um, you mentioned yeah. a few niches. That that's that's particularly interesting as well because, uh, yeah. it, was that something that you originally decided to do where where you focus on all these niches, or is it something that came as a byproduct? of the methodology that you have for example can somebody from a more uh, established or, or bigger niche you know learn from the techniques that you use and still see the results that you mentioned about or, or is it only specific to these small smaller niches yeah that's a good question so i think that uh fundamentally right uh you know the the fundamentals of marketing stays the same uh in terms of you know really being able to craft the right marketing message, being able to craft an irresistible offer, being able to, you know, understand what is it that the market wants before you present that solution to them. Uh, so I, I think at the start, I really wanted to, you know, go broad, right? I didn't want to just like focus on, you know, uh, like just financial advisors or real estate agents or, you know, coaches, consultants, service providers, that kind of thing. Uh, and the reason for that was because uh, I felt that uh, it was a very boring problem to solve. If I keep going after like real estate agents or if I kept going after like financial advisors, because uh, to me, like, I feel that the, the team wouldn't grow as a marketer if we just, you know, you know, service all these niches. Yeah. So uh, to date, I think we have done like, you know, whether it's B2B, B2C, e-commerce, low ticket, high ticket products, uh, we have done it all. Uh, and I find that like intellectually stimulating, right? Because it's gonna challenge you each time around, right? And you have, it's, a, it's an ever reiterating process because uh, you know, the, what, what you're really hiring a marketer for, right? Is for them to test and for them right. to look at the, 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 the data and really say, okay, uh, you know, this particular ad, you know, the click-through rate is not 
high enough, right? Or right. this particular headline that is being used is not, uh, you know, getting the, the click through rate that we want. Uh, so I think, you know, in our business, right, we have checked this for everything, uh, thanks to your program. <laughs> uh, and, and we really start to look at, uh, okay, if, you know, a particular marketing message that we put out there, the sort of headline, uh, the offer, uh, it's performing below our KPIs, you know, across like the other benchmarks that we have for, for our clients, uh, yeah. then we'll simply just remove that. And then we'll just keep reiterating until we find success from <laughs> there. Oh, that's awesome, man. I love that. Uh, I think that that really like kind of like debunks or changes uh, one of the common misconceptions that people have about marketing and that that is just, yeah. that is just some like creative, uh, you know, genius strategy one time and that's it, right? Uh, but what you've identified and is that uh, you are telling all of us is that it's it's really a process where we have to experiment, uh, we yeah. have to trial things out, we have to test yeah, new concepts continually. Um, yeah. And I've seen this myself when I do marketing as well. It's it's yeah. really not just a one off thing. People people tend to see the one off effects or the one off results yeah. and think you know that's it right. That's that's the one thing that people try and then it worked and yeah. and you know everything's great. Uh, but what they don't see is like, you know, what Thomas Edison says, there's a thousand yeah. and one things that they've tried that did not work before they right. got there. And that's typically how marketing uh, is like. And, yeah, and I love exactly. that. And hopefully, you know, um, the audience also take, takes away something from there. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the, f- the few things that you mentioned. You mentioned a few mm-hmm. things that people had to do in order to get their marketing efforts going, uh, one of which uh, I think was an irresistible offer. How does that yeah. work? Like, how, how does somebody come up with an irresistible yeah. offer, especially if uh, they are in the niches that you mentioned where, yeah. you know, maybe in like financial advisory or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, another niche that perhaps has mm-hmm. a very uh, common offer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you make it irresistible? Yeah, so that's a good question. So if you think about it, right, like there are like 20,000 real estate agents in Singapore and possibly even more than 30,000 financial advisors, right? Right. So realistically, right, everybody's selling the same thing, if you think about it. Like they're selling like insurance plans or like homes that pretty much the same, right? How, how, do you, how do you set apart that offer to make it different? Exactly. So I think, yeah, I think fundamentally, right, when it boils down to the offer, right, you really want to put uh, content and you really want to put a message, right? That would stimulate the interest of that prospect, right? So uh, what I mean by that, right? Is like, instead of just going straight for the, you know, the consultation call or, you know, the get a quote, right? Or the, you know, speak to our team, you know, that kind of thing. Like typically what I do in this kind of like hyper competitive market whereby it's like red ocean, like it's you, it's a dog eat dog world, right? Think about it. So uh, what we do is we put like, you know, a, a headline that will really attract their attention. Right, so something like five money murdering mistakes that you may make before buying a condo, right? That will be specifically targeted towards like people that want to buy a condo, and uh, you can also even do something like uh, six shockingly simple, uh, you know, techniques to really optimize your insurance portfolio, right? There'll be somebody that is in the market looking for a financial advisor, you know, probably been burned before, right, probably yeah. had a bad experience with an insurance agent, and then now they're like, shit, <laughs> like this guy is giving me value first before yeah. he actually, uh, you know, asked me for an appointment or coffee or that kind of thing, right? So right, right. I think uh, that is the fundamental basis of being able to provide value uh, before you actually ask for anything in return, whether it's a coffee or a consultation call, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. this is funny because like, I think just yesterday, right? I think uh, you saw that, uh, you know, there was literally a guy that just asked, hey, Jim, like, like I really want to be an entrepreneur one day. Like, you know, can we have coffee sometime? So if he were to be like, completely uh, twist the whole thing and say, hey, uh, Jim, you know, I, I saw like seven shocking things that you never, uh, you know, realized on your website that I think you need to immediately fix the way right now, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it's hurting your conversion rates, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you're burning money by doing this. Yeah. yeah, so if you were to use that approach, I think, you know, that would get the cut through and that would definitely get my attention. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> so that, that really is, you know, how you set yourself apart from all the other financial advisors, all the other real estate agents in a, you know, red ocean, so to speak, whereby it's a hyper competitive market. So that to me is like the fundamental basis of value-based marketing by providing value first uh, and really, you know, trying to elicit that direct response from the prospect. 
Yeah, oh, and man. that's, that's also awesome. how I think you can best spend your marketing dollars and not just like burn them. <laughs> I, I love that, man. I love that. I love the fact that yeah. uh, you came from the angle that your marketing concepts are all based on that because I think it's so important uh, for people to know the value that we can give them and that we are giving yeah. them value first and then they'll be like, oh, cool. Uh, that's how I know I can trust this this person, whether you know whether your client is in like service-based businesses or product-based businesses or any business or industry, because the fact that you give value first before asking for something, uh, I think is one of the fundamental things that a lot of people don't do. And like you mentioned in that that context where that person was asking you for your advice, uh, I see that a lot, right? People yeah. always always think of themselves and they don't really they don't really frame it for like a win-win kind of you know, a position or women kind of like arrangement. Yeah. Uh, and, and typically, you know, how, how, how do you say yes to something like that? It's really, really difficult to say yes to something like that. Uh, I, I would imagine is, that you are bombarded by this kind of messages, like <laughs> hundreds of them every month, I, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah and, and you're right in the sense that this is like, you know, what happens in most sales or marketing messages that people just, yeah. just try to shove their product down like their clients or their prospects yeah. through it. Uh, and it's no wonder that you know it's so hard for them to get a ROI or a return yeah. on the ad spend. Cool, that was awesome. Uh, Jim, uh, we have two questions for you. Uh, yeah. One, what do you think is the most important habit uh, you know, to be a successful entrepreneur? I love this question. So uh, I think for uh, most entrepreneurs, right, they really start to you know, dig very deep into their own business. And start to like try to optimize, you know, okay, which aspect of my business can I really fix, right? Like, okay, should I really go and like, you know, improve my product, right? Should I really go and try and improve my marketing? Should I really go and try and improve my sales? Should I really go and try and improve my uh, fulfillment, right? But one thing they don't look at, right, is actually the first E that you mentioned in your in your book, uh, you know, the, the, the super scaling book is realistically is just looking at yourself, right? Which is the engine, right? Which is the entrepreneur itself. Because I believe that, uh, you know, the business, right, is a direct reflection, okay, of the business owner, right? Mm -hmm. So if the business owner is sloppy, you know, uh, you know, wakes up late, uh, is not on time, uh, you know, doesn't take care of their body, you know, is obese, is overweight, uh, you know, feeling lethargic all the time, then the chances are, right, the business is not very successful, <laughs> right? Like, you, you got to look at yourself and, and, and really start looking at, okay, how do I build a better version of myself so that with that better version of myself, I can naturally parlay that into my business because that is going to be how you're going to build the business. Yeah. So I think that would be the, you know, the single most important advice to really work on yourself and make sure that you take care of yourself, you know, don't, uh, don't look at it as, you know, it's two separate entities. I'm, you know, I should go all in on my business and then, you know, my, my, my marriage is in shambles or like, you know, I, I, my, my kids hate, hate, hate their, 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 their father or whatever that might be, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, it, it, got, it, has to be a, it has to be a holistic thing uh, oh, whereby, man. you know, you've got to optimize every single part of your life and not just the business alone. And, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs fall, uh, you know, into this trap. They fall into this rabbit hole where they, they really, uh, you know, spend a lot of time in their business and they're just busy for the mm -hmm. sake of being busy, which, yeah. uh, which is not, not good. No, I, I completely agree. Uh, I think that is, that's awesome. That's an awesome way of saying that because that's what we do here at Super Scaling as well, because it's not the business. And I tell people that, hey, it's the entrepreneur that drives the business. But what really happens is that the entrepreneur doesn't compartmentalize right, and say that, oh, the business is yeah. business and that's why the business is run this way. Uh, what happens is that how we do anything at all in our lives uh, it's literally how we do everything. And you yeah. know, we can optimize for one aspect, which is like say business, which is maybe typically in terms of like financial and maybe time or maybe location freedom. But uh, what needs to happen is what you said, like this holistic approach, because if if we don't have the the personal health or the capacity to in as an individual, you know, reap those rewards that we get from our business, then we have ultimately fail in our uh, so-called optimization because as a system in our lives, one component is doing well, but the rest are not. And that's literally yeah. what systems are. Right? We have to make sure that the ecology as a whole works, not just 
one part of it. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. So as you would know, right, uh, I think this is just to share with the audience. Uh, like I personally, like for myself, uh, like I, I wake up at about like 4.30 a.m. every day and then I, I hit the gym at 5, right? And then uh, I would also be like the first guy to be in the office, right? And like, I mean, like 8.30 a.m. or 8 a.m. or what, whichever the case might be. Uh, and really, I just want to set that, you know, example, like for the team. Right, you can't just be like sloppy and then like expect your team to work harder than you. Like that's yeah. not the way the world works, yeah. right? You gotta be yeah. that. You gotta be that role model for the team, and you really yeah. gotta be able to, uh, show, right? Not just by telling, but by yep. showing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So agree. I think that's that's uh you know such as that's an uh, an insight on how you can really apply it to your your personal life. I think that's one of the everything best. else that you do. Yeah, I think that's one of the best forms of leadership to actually show that you know things are able to be done and that you can actually do it and that we you right. will we that you will do it also. Uh that's that's the best way, right? Rather than to just tell people yeah. and then you know they they know that you know it's something that you yourself can't even do, right? So uh I love that. Uh we have another question for you. What advice would you give to another business owner? Wow, uh this is a huge one to unpack. <laughs> just one. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I think they need to perform, uh, you know, market research and really understand their, uh, their, their customers. Uh, mm-hmm. And the better you understand the customers' problems, right? Then the easier it is for you to, uh, you know, structure that product to optimize your product or service uh, to make sure that it really addresses that that pain point. Yeah. So I think far too often I see a lot of uh, business owners or startups or, you know venture capital backed uh, startups, right? They, they really try very hard to create that product or that service without having, uh, you know, done enough market research to see what that uh, demand is, right? Yeah. To really find out, is there a demand for it, right? Because yeah. if there isn't, right, then you go ahead and create a product and that service and then, you know, everything goes to shit because like nobody's buying it, right? And exactly. then you can't, you, you can't have a business without anybody buying a product or service. Exactly. I love that, man. And sometimes market research is as simple as having a conversation or hopefully a few yes. conversations uh, with your target and you know, you'll be able to find out a lot more that way. Awesome, Jim. Well, if people are interested to find out more about how you can help them, you know, uh, deliver more customers, sales and leads, uh, how best can they reach out to you? Yeah, so they can check out my website. Uh, it's www.best. SEO.sg. Uh, and then they can also choose to book a strategy session from there. Uh, and then we will uh, qualify our clients to see you know whether it's a good fit for us to work together because we don't just accept any clients that just like come knocking on our door, right? Because that's not how we work. We operate in a way whereby we really want to make sure that it's a good fit. Sounds good. That's awesome. I love the fact that you also qualify. I think qualification is great. I mean, it's a win-win thing, right? You've got to be able to support. Yeah. Your clients, you've got to be able or confident to de- deliver the results to them, and then you know that's how you actually have an arrangement that works out. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, thanks everybody for listening to another episode of Seven Minute Scaling Secrets. Today we found out from Jim, who runs Best SEO uh, about how to actually deliver more clients, more leads, more sales uh, to his clients' businesses. Uh, thanks so much for listening in. If you like this episode, please remember to like, comment, share this with somebody who might benefit. And I look forward to seeing you and hearing you from the next episode.